Um, so, gentlemen, what a year it's been, and let's start it off. No point messing around. Um, new rule set and medical standards um, have been set in Irish MMA. Um, these came into fruition earlier in the year. They've been worked on. Uh, this is where fighters were requ- uh, required. There's no more knees to the head. Same day weigh-ins. They had to wear shin guards, and they had to wear rash guards. Um, this was implemented. Amateur level. So a- amateur level. Yeah. I do apologize. So, amateur level, these are the rule sets. And then there was new medical standards that were adopted and brought in, and Ireland was leading the way in this. Um, Rob's going to magically edit this. So, Bing, if you click on the link, you will see an interview with Glenn Ellis backstage at Bama, where Glenn, uh, who works for Code Blue, showed us around the medical room. So, the new rule set, you have to say, you know, a lot of people at the time question it. It's how will it look, how will it done. It seems it's done really well. You only have to look at the success of the Irish team over at the IMAFs. Um, we medalled in both the Worlds and the Euros. Dave Fogarty, um, again, is silver medalist in both Worlds and the Euros as well. Lee Hammond had a very successful time. Um, but again, you could see the team done really well. So you can see amateur MMA, they're competing. That allowed them this new rule set that we've adopted, taking the IMAF version that Dan you've refereed at you can see that almost like boxing that allows fighters to fight multiple times over a short period of time yeah I mean it's, it's, I was just gonna it's a good um, I mean it seems to have worked out I mean you know we, we spoke about the whole shin pad thing and, and how, how it would affect the fighters you know fighters have different views it'd be interesting to ask the same fighters about their views before then, if, if if and if they you know they fought under them rule sets how, how their mind have changed and, and what their opinion is now um, as far as you know, like I said this is for the amateur rules with the shin pads and no knees to the head. I think it's fantastic. It's only, you know, it's not just in Ireland. A couple of weeks ago, I had a show that I was on, an uh, amateur fighter, even, even though he was in the rules talk. Um, again, in the cage, ended up throwing knees to the head. I warned him, no knees to the head. The next thing you know, he's he's calling me and shouting at me. Oh, but we was allowed to throw knees at us, you know this other event. I said, well, one, you're not at the other event, and two, the unified rules are. No knees to the head, and this goes, you know, like you said, with the IMAF rules across the board. And it's, and I hope that majority and soon all events, whether it'll be up and coming, new events popping up, or you know, the promoters make sure that their rules and their referees are making sure that everyone is following this this rule set. Obviously, you have the thing about the shin pads. You know, there's still a little bit of, especially in the UK, you know, whether you should wear shin pads if you're having one fight. Understanding the tournament format where you would wear shin pads, it protects the fighter as well and it allows you to continue into your next bracket, etc. Uh, but as far as knees to the head and elbows, etc., everyone is to follow the unified rules. Um, and it just makes my job easier and makes obviously the, the fighter's job easier of not having any points deducted or anything like that. But yeah, yeah I mean, that's a good rule that they brought in, and, I, and especially the brain scan. Um, and I'm blabbing on a bit, but if the brain scan stuff, not just from the amateur side, but as we saw it on Bama um, and the Bellator just, just past weekend, yes, we lost a couple of fights due to medical reasons for whatever it may be. You know, some fighters, I'm not going to name names, but some fighters have to double check as well and make sure they they they, they, they done a second scan on them. And, you know, f- you know, safety of the fighters is paramount, and, and I'm glad they've done that. Yeah, they may, may have lost a couple of fights or a couple of people weren't able to fight, and some people may even retired. Um, but you know, safety is paramount. You know, and that is good. It's a good, good step forward for Irish MMA and MMA on the whole. Do you yeah. find Dan, as as a referee as well, when you're obviously you're stepping in, you you referee in the highest level as well. So when you're refereeing the pros, do you find the mindset? Do you almost need to flick a switch when you know it's an amateur, or is, is that just something for you personally when you step in? You know it, and it's you can differentiate straight away without having to do it. Just talk through your mindset going into it, if you know what I mean. As as in what like when you're uh, re- when you're refereeing an fight amateur or? fight, yeah. When you're, is it almost like you go right? This is amateur. I need to watch out for this, 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 this. Is that a checklist you do personally yourself, as in your style refereeing? Do you know what? Before you used to, before when you had this rules, or I mean, I'm talking about a couple of years ago, and I used to have this like amateur A class, B class, C class. Um, no standing headshots, none, no headshots on the ground. You're not allowed to do this. You're not, there at that point, yeah, he used to go. Hold on a second. What? What is he allowed? Knees to the head? Isn't he allowed? Yeah. Whereas now, and and it's a great job, you know. Where you know who, whoever set this up, the IMF, whatever template we're using, that there is a unified rule, and and it just like I said, makes it now easier of going. Okay, this is an amateur fight. This is what's allowed, and this is what's not allowed, and it does make it easier as opposed to going. Okay, class one, class two, class three, amateurs. No. 
and then used to have this word, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of it as well, we used to call it semi-pro MMA. There's no such thing as semi-pro. Everyone, either you're amateur or you're pro, and it's the mm-hmm. rule set that, that you work under. Um, but, yeah, it does make it easier knowing, knowing that and going in there as a referee, um, just keeping my 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 game and, and making sure the fighters are safe. That's it. Yeah. One of the big uh, questions when this was brought in or one of the big criticisms, criticisms of it was, was the sport, the amateur side of the sport, moving too far away from the professional? Um, would it give a, a young amateur fighter the tools they need to go in there and fight a professional fighter? Based on, on what has happened so far and the change in the rules, do you think there's any risk of the amateur level moving too far away from the, the pro level in terms of what you can do in the cage? No, I don't think so. I mean, I, I know a couple of people were arguing about knees to the head, for example. How are you going to prepare someone with, with amateur and never been near to the head, obviously putting them straight into pro and getting then getting near to the head? Well, I'm not being funny. When you're training in a gym, you don't yeah. train knees to the head. Well, I, I, I know I don't, or I never used to. I don't do sparring and go, hey, we're allowing knees to the head because next week you're fighting, yeah. you know, pro rules or whatever. Um, as far as that goes, no, not really. Um, I think it's a good, I think it's a good concept um, that they've put in, and slowly and gradually, everyone's picking up on it. Look, any rule sets that you put in. Everyone needs to adjust to, and, and you know, for example, as of January, like the whole rule set of a downed opponent now is being changed. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the John McCarthy um, breakdown of it. Yeah. If you haven't, I strongly suggest every promoter, fighter, fan, anybody to listen to it. Um, I'm sure you guys will share on on the on the Fight Talk page. I've shared it on my page. Um, you got to get used to it. And don't get me wrong, there's going to be certain certain times where there, there is going to be fighters going, oh, I wasn't sure about the rules or, you know, I'm not sure about this or a couple of people going, for example, like the, the um, kidney shots with yeah. your heel, right? There's a, there's a couple of people who are going, oh, well, I, I don't see that being uh, a good rule because you can still knee to the spine. Well, that's my job as a referee to make sure that the fighter doesn't hit them spine strikes yeah. with, with the with the hill. So if people not, don't know what I'm talking about, if you're in the guard, sometimes you see the fighters with the back of the hill lifting up, hitting the buttocks, back of the legs. Um, now you can obviously hit the kidneys, which is legal. But it's my job to make sure it doesn't hit anywhere on that spine area because obviously the spine area is still dim at the back of the head. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, with these new rule sets, you're always going to have people saying, you know, it's hard, it's not going to work. And then you've got to have people saying it is going to work. But you've got to give it time to, to people to adjust. You yeah. know, we're human beings. we just got to get adjust to it. The way I look at it is that when it's happening at the highest level, you know, John McCarthy spoke as well um, previously about, you know, when he first refereed the UFC, you know, they were just literally going off what's happening in the cage and yeah. the next show there might be a different mm-hmm. rule because they're just adjusting you know but it is such a young sport that it's changing rules it's adapting it's yeah. changing things and this is allowing like i was i was alluding to with the professional or sorry the amateur boxers it's allowing you know all of a sudden you've guys who are representing their country they're bringing home medals as a representative a representation for their country so it's a great pride and a great honor and it gives somebody at amateur level a real target to aim for rather than going right I'll have six amateur fights and I'll turn pro yeah. do you know what I mean to go right I'll qualify for the IMAFs hopefully I'll do well in the Euros and then I can go to the Worlds yeah. and they're travelling the world representing yeah. their country yeah. and, and for me that's a great thing you know Yeah, I, can um, and I, think, I think Cole Cole brought this up when he was on the show that some people might not want to turn pro so just you just want to be the best amateur out there, you know. Yeah. It might not be a career for you. It might just be that you train three times a week and represent your country. It doesn't have to be a pro status where you get paid, etc. And and you don't want people to be put off going. Oof, I don't know. I've never had a fight before. I'm a first fight as an amateur. I'm going to be allowed knees to the head. You know, it's like that that can be kind of off putting. So I also see that they've changed the rules slightly to fit everyone to welcome people to come into the sport and welcome people to compete and obviously make that gradual change. If everyone is in a good team and you're in a good place and you've got good coaches behind you, I'm sure that they will guide you through your amateur rankings and transition into your pro side of stuff. So, yeah, all yeah. in all, for me, this year has been great for the amateur scene, especially with the IMAF, um, the, the championships going on, and also with events putting a lot more amateur fights on and, and fighting under these rules. Yeah, before we move on, just it's something that I always used to say was that there's nothing wrong with making changes or trying things. I, I like when promoters, organizations, whoever, just try different things and see if they work. If they don't work, you sure you mm. can change it back. Another thing was, a, as we said, it's a huge year, 2016, for 
uh, changes to rules. But that's not the end. In 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, it's going to be different rules, different things that change. So it's always going to evolve. It's not you know a one-time thing. It's not perfect now. It probably never will be perfect. It's just going to keep evolving. So um, yeah, yeah. And on that note, Rob, I'm just going to say, as long as the, the whoever's making the changes and the majority of us do, as long as it's in the best interest yeah. and the safety of the fight, exactly. That's it. You know, as long as you don't come 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 up with some crazy rule that you're allowed knuckle dusters in an MMA fight. I go something and, crazy like that. You I know? go out and biting and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, well, Carl uh, wants headbutts back. Yeah, Carl wants head today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, so... his head's too big. That's why. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's uh, that's like firing a nuke using Carl's brain. <laughs> um, something that happened as well that was really big this year. Um, see, it, it was always there, but it, it it seems to have exploded this year with a lot of high value. Um, examples was the free agency market. Yeah, big you, had, time. you had a lot of fighters testing. You know the whole Reebok thing and the UFC pay and everything that came out of that. Out of that came the free agency uh, pool. Everyone yeah. was calling them, weren't they? So there was a couple of big examples of that. Um, you had Benson Henderson, uh, Rory McDonald, um, Pink Pants, welterweight champion. Lar- Larkin, Larkin is there. Uh, as well. What's Matt Mitrione. Matt, Matt Mitrione. What's the guy in the pink? Phil Davis. Davis, yeah. Me. None of you were helping me when I said pink pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Phil Davis. So there's there's plenty of examples of fighters going out there and, and testing. Big name examples as well. Yeah, like they know, are, high profile, you know. Especially like Rory as well. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's kind of a byproduct of the times now, especially after something that we're going to talk about, I'm sure, the, the UFC sale. Mm-hmm. Especially after the UFC sale, the fighters seen how much the UFC made on that sale, 4.2 yeah. billion. And they said, oh, I'm not making enough money. I'm not making as much money as, as this company has just sold for. Yeah. Um, so it just part of that. It's byproducts of that. It's just the, you know, the evolution of the sport. It's always going to happen. It happens everywhere. It happened in every sport. You know, at first, there's not as many rights. They're not getting paid as much. And then eventually it happens. And um, but yeah. so, something that came along with that, we started playing them in. I know you mentioned it, but I didn't actually put it in the show notes as well, is the Fighters' Union. And yeah. I imagine that would come along. Now, there is a few different versions of the Fighters' Union. You had Randy Couture was on uh, Chael Sonnen's... Um, yes. Podcast. Podcast. What's uh, you're welcome. You're, you're welcome. welcome. Yeah, you're welcome, Chael Sonnen. Uh, so uh, he was talking about the whole Muhammad Ali Act. Um, and we we covered this as well on previous yeah. shows that are available on um, iTunes or Podbean or uh, YouTube. Like, subscribe, and review, and share. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we did speak about the Ali um, Act as well previously. Carl thought it was a great idea in some ways, but didn't think it would apply to MMA, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, but Randy Couture was on talking about that. And then, of course, we've had the latest one. with the, It was almost the big guns of, of UFC and former UFC. You had George St-Pierre, you came Velasquez, you had Donald Cowboy Cerrone, who after da- Dana White speak, backed out of that like a mad thing. <laughs> and then, of course, it was led by Bjorn Ridney, who hasn't been seen or heard of since. Yeah. Uh, he's on silent on the front but again the the fighter union and free agency I think in a way they sort of um, they complement each other in a way they do yeah because like you, the figures don't lie like Brennan Schaub was very openly uh, spoke about this on the fighter and the kid as well about how much he lost you to sponsorship and let's be honest Brennan Schaub wasn't a top level guy right he was on the peripheral, yeah, yeah. Well, but um, like, if you look, if you look, can you imagine what GSP would lose money wise if he went back to the UFC and couldn't wear an Under Armour or whatever? Do you know what I mean? And and the examples are there, but that's the top guys. But the lower level guys who aren't the big household names, that if they're on a if they're on a fight pass, so they're now they're televised, they'd be making big money off the sponsorship. So they lost out big time. So they were like, hey, listen, Bellator are offering money. They're doing this. Now, at first, when it first started happening, I was like, ah, oh, they're moving. They're going to a, a weaker uh, league, if you like. But Bellator now is starting to get... A, it, yeah. Like, Scott Coker, when we spoke to him, reckoned yeah, yeah, yeah. that their uh, welterweight, welterweight division, division yeah. is the strongest out there. Now, I, when he started, I, disagree, I went, I disagree well, in terms of depth, but in terms of their top five, they have some yeah. really, really good top five fighters there who I think any of those top five fighters could compete in the UFC. Sure, Rory McDonald's there and he, he did compete. Yeah, he was UFC. he was so close. Um, but yeah, I think I think the two of them really do lead into one or so. Just openly talking about it, like free agency, I don't think there's anything wrong with a fighter valuing Absolutely his not. equity and what he's worth. Um, like this whole thing about you know, they should get a certain percentage of the business. Well, that's not necessarily the case. Look, we work for a company. We work hard. We, we agree to a pay. Our company earns a lot more than what we get paid. But same with everybody. The, the guy who's a, who's a plumber, who's an electrician, who, whatever you do. You know what I mean? If you work in Tesco's, if you work in Marks and Spencer's, if you work in wherever. Do you know what I mean? Your company still makes a huge amount and you get a percentage of that because you're an employee. And at the end of the day, 
well, I, in, in some way, uh, they are almost like employees of, of the show. Not, and it, it's up to you to sign the contract. If you sign a contract to fight for the UFC, you signed it. So you yeah. agree to it. So it, it's like turning around and saying, now, I do think they got screwed on Reebok. Like that, that, that was enforced on them. So that was screwed on them. But if you sign a contract that I'm going to earn X amount per fight and then come out and moan about it, well, don't sign the contract in the first place. Yeah, but the hard thing is sometimes that contract that you sign, I think the problem some of the fighters have got, they've signed that contract on that basis, and like you just said, that bad Reebok thing, it was forced on them. Yeah. And like with someone like GSP, he's coming back, and his original contract would then have the Reebok deal on it. Yeah. And they've still got, you know, really got him yeah. by the cojones, so oh, to speak. Yeah. And he's got he's still got that one fight to do, you know, or, or how many fights he's got left to do. Mm. Um, it's hard. I, I like to see companies, and I mean, I'm, I don't know if it's just, just UFC, just, but every company in general, be nice to like go. Okay, you know what? This is what you're getting paid. If we hit this many box, um, uh, what do you want to call it? Pay per views, etc. Every fight is guaranteed this much bonus on, on the night. You know, what I mean? if we hit a certain target, does well, that make if, sense? If you like, look at that as well, though, yeah, I, I do get that. But if you look at it, for example, it already happens. Fighters do get a percent. Some fighters get a percentage of the pay per view. No, and when you're fighters. but when you're on a Conor McGregor pay per view, if that was the case. No one would fight unless Conor McGregor was on the main event. Because, like, fuck that, why would I fight when McGregor's fighting? And they, and they, yeah. they wouldn't put anyone on the undercard either. Yeah, so... Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it is, yeah, a, it is a weird one. The, the one thing is Reebok screwed with the fighters. So I can really admit that. But the actual signing of your fight contract now, if guys are, who have signed, re-signed since Reebok, yeah. that, you know, that's up but to I you, think, you know? I think that's why there's a big change. Because back in the day, and not even back in the day, a couple of years ago... Going to the UFC was the was the pinnacle. It still is the pinnacle. Yeah, yeah. But I think a lot of fighters see that there is there mm. is plenty out there. There's other promotions that will pay it, and you could technically make more money. In their well, promotions. I think and it's not, and you're not just signing for the UFC to just be a UFC fighter. I don't think yeah, that yeah. that's not perceived anymore. Mm. It's not something that fighters really think about as much. Mm. It's not as much not as much as it used to I be. Th- I think if you're the champion of whatever division and it's the champion of the UFC division I think that holds a lot more metal oh, abs- absolutely division. I'm not saying that but what I mean is I don't think fighters are going to take a pay cut to go to the UFC just to be a UFC <laughs> fighter not yeah. anymore I don't yeah. think that's the case but no, as, as well as that's I, not everybody I, I have sort of spoke out about Bellator and their sort of their mockery fights and stuff and hopefully they're getting away from that a little bit Um because I have to say, I was usually impressed with Bellator when they were over last week. Um, mm-hmm. Just how they ran things backstage to everything. Bellator were boom, they were down to everything. Um, I just think if it, 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 to be taken on that level, they need to stop the freak show, if you know what I mean. Stop them fights. and Because they have the roster there to do it. And they're building it. And that's what Scott Coker said as well when we, were, when we were speaking with him, was that they're looking to always get these new guys, new guys, new guys. So the money's there. They've got the Viacom money basically as well, and TV and, and stuff like that. So, you know, a competition will always bring competition, you know. Yeah. If you monopolize something, uh, it's not going to be as good, you know. The thing with Bellator, you were saying, it's no different to what we were just talking about about the rule set. You got to give it time; it will plan out. Yeah. It will, the, you know, the, the changes will happen. There are other promotions out there. I mean, for example, I mean, obviously it's not stateside. You know, I was just in St. Petersburg for ACB. Yeah. That I mean, the talent pool there is like wow. Yeah. And yeah, the only yeah. reason, and then and, and Brian Lacey and and um, um, Frank Mir were saying this. One of the major reasons these guys are not on the UFC or places like that is because of the, the language barrier, because yeah. of the English. You know, it truly is. And, you know, it's the talent, some of the Russian, the, che- the, the Chechen fighters who are yeah. fighting, honestly, the, you could put them in the UFC now and they will make I, a big I was, I was, yeah, I was watching. Already. I was watching the live link. I was yeah. watching your, your beautiful self. Um, Thanks. Doing your job. <laughs> Look at him. Um, but, yeah, I was uh, I, I was watching the live stream and you were going, holy fuck. Just the level you talk That's about, you know, the American grapplers and the old and the, you know, old school wrestling was the best base and stuff. You look at these Russian guys and they're yeah. just fucking out. They're so talented. Yeah. yeah. Just uh, before we move on from that, I think it, it, similar to what we said, 2016 is the start of it. I don't think it's gonna get. I don't think it's gonna stop. I think it's mm. gonna continue, especially if you heard um, the recent comments by and the, the name who it was. I think it might have been Joe. It was Joe Lozon. He was on some podcast I was listening to, and he was talking about. Uh, the changes there's been since the sale. Yeah. And he was talking about when uh, Zufa were around, the, the Fertitta brothers and Dana was running things, that they'd usually get some kind of uh, bonus after the fight. Yeah. Not like a post-fight bonus, like a, a knockout bonus. Just, actual, yeah, well done, yeah. Yeah, a, a yeah bonus. Yeah. And he, the fight with Jim Miller, 
and um, he didn't receive one wow. and he thinks that might have that it might change he probably won't be as generous to the guys that they used to be really generous to so one um, one thing that struck me as well and what you're saying rob is, is just straight in the car before it goes out of my head was i was reading john Kavanagh's article today in for, the 42.ie and he was saying that the new owner still haven't spoke to conor mcgregor it's crazy like, isn't it that's crazy that's, that's, that's insane yeah. like it's what? But I think that's a good transition <laughs> to the next one. Yeah. Is it? Next one's... We'll go with the UFC sound. Next. All right. Perfect transition. Yeah. All right, so... <laughs> we'll rewind that back. <laughs> well, I haven't spoke to Conor McGregor. Yeah. <laughs> so, that brings us nicely then. Another big thing this year was the UFC was sold, Rob. For how much? I can't remember. It was 4.2 4. 4. billion. billion. 4.2 billion dollars. That's, that's, that's a crazy, like, even thinking about it, that's a crazy amount, especially the amount that they bought it for and the amount they pumped into yeah. it. It's a huge company. And again, you know, it's, it's, it's I guess that they, they worked it out that that's what it's worth. I just, I just want to see what the new owners do with it. Where do they go? Obviously, they had lots, lots of um, job cuts. They've released a lot of people of their job roles. Um, you know, uh, it'd, be, it'd be interesting to see, see where, where they go. Okay, you've cut, I've cut the, all the job roles to the fighters pay pay rise increase how, how does it work so out look at the, why did, do they need to did save did you see money? what you Carl I mean? Miller's interview and stuff he was saying his fight got scrapped yeah. Um, yeah. remember that car got moved and yeah. he never got for Hawaiian he, card yeah it? he got like literally yeah. he got show but money these, I think yeah. and he, he was left with $600 and he's away from his family for oh. so long and then you like so that's like Cole, I'm not saying Cole Miller's the oh. low level but then you've got the guy who just created history Um yeah. Conor McGregor, and they haven't rang him. Yeah. They haven't spoke to him. Yeah. Like John Kavanagh was saying in the article, he's like, "What do, do we ring Mark Wahlberg? Is Colin? Bar- what's his name? Colin? What's his name? Colin? Colin O'Brien. Colin, Colin O'Brien. O'Brien. Is he the new yeah. matchmaker? And he said, like, Colin, Colin O'Brien. Colin Barbarian. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I was there. I was going there. But like, do we ring him? Is he the matchmaker? You know? Yes. And like, how have you not contacted your biggest asset? And let's be honest, forget the whole we're Irish, we love Conor McGregor nah, thing. It's just, it's He's just the facts. biggest asset. It's just facts. Yeah. He's the biggest pay per view. Like his pay per views outside have done more than every other pay per view in the year. That's yeah. correct, isn't it? Yeah. If I bought the UFC right now, if I used all my money, all that money that I have, and I went and I bought the UFC, he's the first person that yeah. I would be talking to. I'd be like, "When are you fighting next?" Because yeah. I need to recoup because I just yeah. spent all my money. They got tons of loans to pay for this deal. So yeah. they need, that's the reason why, um, or it's probably the contributing reason why they have all these interim title fights. They have, they just want to plug everything they want to. Like, and another one being really well. But we, I'd like, I'd like to think that, okay, the reason I haven't contacted these people is that, okay, they're going through a transition period. And that's true. Be, okay, but, this is the person that they're setting up, you know, maybe, maybe the owner doesn't want to contact him, but they want to put so, appoint someone to go, okay, look, you're in charge of contacting the fighters, liaising with the fighters, the managers, etc. Maybe that hasn't happened yet. I, you know? I get Especially that, Dan, right? But I raise you, they've stripped him of his featherweight fucking title yeah, yeah, without yeah, contacting yeah. him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we won't, <laughs> I, we won't, just, I was just saying. <laughs> yeah. We won't get into it too much because we, we need to cover everything. But and we're Ring them, cover ring them. <laughs> get on the phone. What's their fucking name? Ari, Ari, where yeah. are you? Um, no, so we won't... We won't Cover too much, but then the yeah. whole talk of Josie Aldo going to lightweight for an interim title. Interim title. If that's true, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Ugly. McGregor only won it like yesterday. It's, it's silly. Like it's it's fucking silly. And that just that just like the reason why they stripped disappoint Connor of the featherweight title is so they'd have an active champion at featherweight. So they create another interim title. Yeah. When they have an active champion, and then they're going to bring the active champion yeah. to lightweight. Yeah. The stupid thing about it as well, though, is is like. If you look at boxing, take boxing as, as the yeah, point of view, right? Going that boxing, way, there used to be a heavyweight champion in the world. Like, you look at Klitschko when he had all the belts. Like, you needed yeah. about six people to just carry the fucking belts yeah, to the, the ring. WFC 7. Do you know what I mean? So, WBC The champion, UFC is going that way. And, like, how's Jose Aldo getting a shot at an interim belt? He's never fought a, 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 a lightweight. belt? I don't, I don't understand. understand. It. It's fucked up. But, but, uh, that was anyway. the first course. How long yeah. are we in? Um... <laughs> But, but nah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure what my feelings on that. But hey, you know, let's let's just see what happens again. Let's go back to the whole. Let's see what happens it, with the change. Huh? Yeah. yeah, but, the, it, but it is. what I will say is, uh, since the change has happened, uh, the three things that I kind of take from it is that um, it kind of put the M- put MMA into the mainstream. I don't mean like on out the mainstream sport, but like. When you sell a business, a company for four point two billion, everyone stands People up and is looking notices, at you. Yeah, yeah. Is looking at you. The other yeah. thing is, I don't think for the casual fans much has changed. Like if you're a casual fan yeah. watching the UFC, really business that, as usual. Business as usual. Yeah. Nothing has really changed. So I think that's a good thing. Like we work for a, a company who is currently in the middle of an integration, 
and what's the biggest thing we want to do we want to make sure the customers don't notice yeah, it. yeah. and that's the biggest thing that a company needs to do when they're integrating new things so yeah. that's one thing and the other thing is behind the scenes lots of lots of things have changed there's been lots yeah. of firings but you can, yeah, you can see a lot that. of mainstays yeah. have gone yeah but as well it, there's now talk as well now it is rumour but they in a way I think addressed it didn't he about Goldberg Mike Goldberg, yeah Mike Goldberg could be getting the well, uh, yeah I didn't know he addressed it but he papers. did say that he was trying to get somebody yeah. um, in and it's supposed to be I can't remember his name some is that because of the TV they're looking to do? Yeah, they're, yeah, no, they're just saying they want to change direction in their yeah, type, the of, type uh, of commentary that they have. Goalie, goalie and Rogan are but, class together. But that's the thing. Sometimes if it's, the, 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 people got ideas on making changes, think it sounds good in here, yeah, but actually really doesn't. Whereas, for example, I mean, there have been good things. You know, I'm not hating anyone, but for example, when when they released Matt Hughes and Chuck Liddell, yeah. It's like, I, I don't even know what their roles were. Yeah. You know, it, it was like, okay. Big, and apparently uh, they were on really big money as well. Yeah, they, won, apparently yeah. they were really on big money. And I can't remember whose podcast I was listening. I think it might have been Charles as well. Um, he was saying about like Forrest Griffin. And, and, and uh, you know, he hasn't lost his. And you do see him. You see him out and about with the yeah. fighters. You see him come over to Ireland, yeah. come over to do Q&As. Yeah. And come over does presenting for the for the Fox TV. He he throws himself out. Why? Because he still loves the sport. I'm not saying mm. Matt Hughes and Chuck Little. Oh, well, Chuck Little uh, was just a coach in um, yeah. Mexico, wasn't he? That Mexico? But again, yeah. it, but but he also got that, paid for that. I'd even, say. With that just... even with that, I did, didn't... That, that, that could have been pumped out a hell of a lot more, yeah. uh, see, you know, even to, to the American audience or to the wider audience, to the UK audience. Mm. You know, why, why did he go and do a Latin America one? He could have yeah. done another USA one, which I think would have been pretty cool, you know. But, you know, So it's, it's crazy, you know. Um, moving on as well, are we all happy with that? Yeah, 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 UFC, yeah, we yeah, happy with, yeah. As as we say, as Dan said, with the real change with the sale, let's hold back, let's not jump all over them, let's see how it goes. See what happens. See yeah. will it be business as usual. You know, at the end of the day, we're the fans. You know, you obviously want to see fighters get paid for it. Yeah, but at the end of the day, we're the fan. We want to see the product. You, but you do hope that everything back behind the scenes is working correctly and the fighters are being looked after. Yeah. Um, a big thing as well that happened in 2016, a lot of Brazilians found this out. That's terrible. You cannot say that. That's just literally pigeonholing Brazilians. You sad we're out and about. Um, and speaking of Brazilians, a Brazilian has currently been um, flagged. Um, yeah. Chris <laughs> Chris <Soibor>, um <laughs> has been flagged. Now, she has released a statement to say it was due to illness and dehydration, I believe she was yeah. saying. Uh, but... A lot of fighters this year, USADA, have struck. They've knocked on people's doors. They've got guns pointed at them by Tim Kennedy. They've got um, <laughs> Vandalay Silva. That wasn't that this year, but running away. This has been USADA's big coming out party with catching people. A lot of people, Brock Lesnar is a highlight, one that was caught. John Jones was a highlight, one that was caught. <laughs> I think that was... At this point, they're just fucking every with, Brazilian. They're just <laughs> fucking with DJ. Have you noticed? Like yeah. every time he gets tested, he, like one time he was in the middle of playing is uh, he was on his Twitch. Uh, playing Twitch. Twitch. Second time he got it was in like a supermarket or something. Yeah, you see that one. Yeah, yeah. I think it was, was fucking. That? DJ, DJ. Demetrius Johnson. Demetrius Johnson. Oh wow. He yeah, was doing a bit mental. of shopping and they yeah, got him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Uh, yeah. But a lot of fighters have spoke about like. Um, like Charles Sonnen was saying, a bloke just turned up and he again was on Charles Sonnen, you're welcome. Charles better start plugging, obviously, Fight Talk. That's all I, I know. know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he was saying, like, he literally went into, like, a cupboard like in his, and took a piss in a cupboard, like, with this bloke yeah. looking at him and that. He was like, so who the fuck are you again? Because they don't have to show your ID. Yeah. But this was the big year of it. And in fairness, it's catching jitters. It is. Um, now, again, you could argue that, yeah, well, is it they really doing the work? Is it testing people? Because, like, you know, they've tested people like Conor McGregor, you'd, um, regularly, you'd Jose Aldo t- chased him out of the country, didn't you, when he was getting tested and shit as well? And there's different things. Vitor, Vel- v- Vitor Belfort Jeez, must hate the fucking that. look at them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's it, again, it's new. Let's sit back. Let's see how it goes. It's like when something new comes out, we did know there was going to be a big yeah. hit ratio, wasn't it, I think? <laughs> The thing I want to say is, okay, you're, you're, you're going to say a majority is, is, is the Brazilian. No, I'm only being sarcastic. It, no, 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 but it, it, I'm, I mean, <laughs> but it is. The best <laughs> sure. to ask, it, is, it is true, right? Majority of them are the mm, Brazilian so, fighters, yeah. correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, so allegedly. Um, <laughs> if that's the case, then maybe maybe they need that, like, in, in their, uh, what do you want to call it, in, in their country and, and their 
commission side of stuff, maybe they need a bit of education and mm. need to be up to date. Look, these are the things. Maybe they just don't know, you know. Who, some of them can claim, hey, I don't read or speak English. Or it could be we haven't got access to the stuff that they need to know know about. Um, so just more education, I think it is as well, you know. Oh, yeah. Because maybe, maybe it's just their way of way of doing things over there. And they think, hey, you know, we're here, we, we do our thing, we train here, we do this, and we're going to fight, and that's it. Then maybe it just needs that bit of education and bit of guidance to go, look, these are the consequences, but, then, you know, this is what you can take, can't take, etc. Yeah. I, I personally believe just a bit of education, a bit of information to them would help them yeah. a long, long way. I completely agree. I think over the, the year we spoke a lot about this and, and we yeah. covered basically everything to, to, to do with yeah. USADA. One thing I always bring up is I still think it's it's difficult for the fighter to make sure they're not on anything when a lot of the stuff that you buy in your local supplement shop well this was a carl brought this up regularly is that you sad i should bring out supplements yeah i think that's a great idea yeah, yeah. and Why it's not? like here you but go then, then it's gonna this. then it's gonna be the whole flip side oh hold on this is my sponsor yeah, yeah true yeah, yeah. that is true yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That's true. I think, I think, I think and on flip yeah. side, it'd be, it'd be cool to have maybe a testing kit. Every fighter has a testing yeah. kit. Hey, you're having this protein powder? Yeah. Dip, dip that, the little worth stick thing in there. If it comes up purple, it's got something in it. If it comes up this, I don't yeah. know. Just yeah, was that like not that, a big you know? thing with John Jones, though, that they tested some of his stuff and some of it was coming back clean and then some of it was well, coming back... Tainted, yeah. Yeah, tainted. So it's basically where they make the shit. They were, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, when you eat certain pe- chocolate bars, it says may contain peanuts. Yeah. And you're going to mean a fucking exactly. dirty milk. Like, yeah. watch, watch Bigger, Faster, Stronger, the yeah. documentary. And yeah. it's, they talk about how unregulated the supplement industry is. It's completely unregulated. Yeah. And even if you check the back and you say, oh, right, definitely yeah, yeah. nothing in this. There yeah. could be something in it. So it, it, it is difficult. And don't say, oh, well, just don't take supplements because yeah. everyone takes supplements. I take yeah. supplements, yeah. you know. I don't take supplements. Yeah. Unless you can't Jacked. Bonus. Jacked. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hand shaking you, your, your traps were getting a bit bigger mate <laughs> um, another big thing uh, this year and we had our reporter on the ground earlier in the year was Mr. Daniel Mulvahedi was at New York when the news broke of uh, legalisation in New York yeah. um, so MMA was legal in New York the final state in the United States of the Americas um, so this was a big step and they obviously celebrated with the huge 205 Five card. Five. I knew you said two. Uh, big two oh five card that obviously went down. Probably card of the year. Phenomenal stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously we we spoke about this as well. It was a big thing. It was about time. It was more politics than anything that was keeping it out of there. Um, but yeah, that was, that was a big story as well that eventually happened. The likes of Weidman and stuff pushed for for so long with the UFC and they finally got there. Yeah. Now they're making a, a. It's usually expensive. It's not like the, your normal local show will have to do. New York show. It's going to be there's so many hoops to jump between. It's quite an expense, apparently. But uh, yeah, so, taxes. Yeah, yeah so taxes. yeah, the UFC are there, and I'm sure Bellator. I think we're talking about going they there are, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they are there. I think. Yeah. So uh, big news. Uh, another big story as well that um, this was the one that really got the trash talking going, got the hype, got everyone talking about it. Was the Conor McGregor uh, standoff with the UFC? The uh, thanks for the cheese. I'm out of here. Uh, tweets. I'm retired. He's retired. Thanks for the cheese. I'm gone. And this set literally exploded the internet. Uh, everything died on the internet. Nothing else mattered in the world. Um, and this was a huge standoff. And it also bred with the new rivalry that has been bred with Nate Diaz. So the two and of the these. Rise of Nate Diaz. Yeah. So the two of these, like Nate Diaz talked his way after his. His last victory, he called out, Yo, Conor McGregor, I've been working for this shit my whole life, man. I think that was all right, Nate Diaz, wasn't it? Um, right. I've been listening to sponsors. I've, I've been listening to Al Foran. Um, so, yeah, he, he, he sort of called out, saying, You know, I've been working my whole life for this. And they got the fight. Um, and, you know, we, Connor now. we know what happened. You do nothing. <laughs> um, we sorry, people, for your ears there. I apologize. That wrecked. Um, so we know what happened in the first fight. Nate Diaz got the victory, got the rear naked choke in the second round, and it's built up this big crescendo of excitement for the big rematch, and it all went down, and it was like between the UFC standoff, nobody knew what was happening, and then Nate tweeted out, if he's quits, I quit, and all this, and, and it's this rivalry is more so. The standoff at the UFC we spoke about was more of a pissing contest, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Um. I don't know what I want to bring on that actually because it's quite funny um, but then you had the whole Nate Diaz and what a thing it's been with our one on one and the trilogy is going to happen it has, it, has happen, yeah, it has to happen but it's born like these are the things that 
any promotion, be it a boxing promotion, be it anything, they dream of having these matchups. Yeah. The whole war, the whole MMA community was infatuated by Nate Diaz, Conor McGregor. It, you either want the Nate to win or you want the Conor to win. Then the press conference, uh, Bottlegate happened, and <laughs> oh, yeah. it, it was just it was all building up to this. And then the fight was phenomenal. McGregor got the nod and the judges' scorecards. He had to rally after the third round. He had to rally back in the fourth. And it was phenomenal. And it's, it, the story, it's we're like we're on chapter 10 and there's still a few more chapters to go. Yeah. That's a lot of chapters in a book, though, 10, isn't it? But oh, um, <laughs> was that for me? you reading? That, that was for me, <laughs> Mr. Man Books. Um, <laughs> that for me was probably the biggest rivalry that is, is, has been bred in MMA and most recent. The only one you can sort of put, like, is John Jones, DC, in the same sort, and then Chuck and Tito Ortiz, but no, uh, no, no Matt Chan Hughes, Frank Mir. No, it's got to be t- it's got to be Tito and Shamrock. Shamrock Tito, yeah, be sure yeah. Get a little yeah. Debt. yeah. <laughs> much better. The heart, yeah, of course it is. <laughs> yeah, you still haven't shared that video of the press conference, Rob. I know, I need to, yeah. press one fucking job, bro. I love one it. job. Oh, I love that. That's my favorite. <laughs> and then Tito, uh, I remember Tito when he was. <laughs> Uh, interviewing fighters after their fights and all. Now, this is just uh, the, what we're going to do is this tangent is brought yeah, to you by obviously Fight Talk. Talk. We've yeah. gone on a tangent. Yeah, but I was watching them, the MMA B. They done kind of a year end type show oh, right, uh, sure. last, and they're talking about this. And Ariel said something like, This just kind of span of a couple of months with Diaz and McGregor could be a book, it could be a movie, and it yeah. really could. If you, think really about, could be, if you think about how that is, it's like Rocky have, and Apollo. It is like you have a fighter coming in, he's. He's the big cheese. He loses to a guy who everyone thought he was going to beat. Yeah. That guy makes tons of money. They do the yeah. rematch and you have everything. It was... I think it's something I, I that you would always be talking about. I think they should have the rematch in oh, Ireland. Yeah. In For Ireland, sure. yeah. That, that, oh, holy that would, shit. Yeah. That would just, just finish off nicely. And yeah, I think that would be crazy. But just quickly want to go back to that point of that one tweet that he put. And I remember we were just about to come do a show with you guys. Um, again, that power of that internet. Oh. You know, if, Bloody crazy, isn't it? And it's, he's the king it's, of it. It's sometimes, yeah, it, 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 it's beautiful. Not just for Conor McGregor, just in general, the breaking news, etc. Social media is, is is on the up, and yeah, I reckon next year a lot of the fires should take to that. And I think they should be educated how to use properly mm. the, the social media to boost their profiles. And I think they do that though. They have a fighter conference, yeah, don't they? Because I know when you summit. sign for the UFC, yeah, they make you. Um, if you're not on Twitter, they get you on Twitter. They get you to get a handle. Because mm. um, okay. I know Charlie Ward when he signed was all of a sudden on Twitter, yeah. and Charlie Ward wasn't on any social media, I don't believe. Uh, but yeah, as far as I know, they they do have training for that. Like, because you know, I think in the early days of, of when cool. they were doing that, was a lot of them were putting up like bullshit stuff, like uh, like getting themselves in serious Cur- trouble, like currently you know. eating my dinner. <laughs> no, but no, I mean like actual. Like don't be fucking saying that like on social oh, media. Yeah. I remember you know, um, it like, who was it? Uh, Bantamway WEC. Miguel Torres, he got in trouble oh, for yeah. saying something fucking yeah. silly on the internet. Yeah. It's a rape joke or something. Yeah, that's and that's what happens. You got to be careful, you know, because yeah. uh, a lot of people will put you up as your role model and saying shit like this. That's why we don't let Carl on our Twitter. That's why Carl is banned from our Twitter. Um, <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> he fucking is. Yeah, Carl's not missing the show. He's just being suspended yeah, from the yeah. show. <laughs> One too many. One too many. So that that's that's sort of a list we've done out of big things in the year, Dan. So is there anything off your head that jumps out at you that you think 2016 was the year of? Um, no, to be honest, I, f- I think we've covered it all. The, the whole as far as officiating goes, the rule sets. Etc. I'm looking forward to the new. I know we we cover this in January. Just the new rule sets that are coming in. Like I said, if has, anyone hasn't watched it, I've shared it on my page. Um, check it out. Big Joe McCarthy gives a good breakdown, a fantastic breakdown. Um, and I hope you guys will share it as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, again, like I said, was, was lucky enough to go to Russia for ACB. They've got big things coming up. I mean, they're, they're one thing to look forward to. Their show in Manchester in March. I mean, Kalidov versus Luke Barnett, especially yeah. Luke Barnett coming off that knockout over on Monday, I think it was. Yeah, same, beautiful, uh, yeah. Crazy. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. If, um, if you're watching this on YouTube or even if you're listening to it, go onto our Facebook or else on YouTube. Tell us what what the big things happened this year and what what your opinion. Yeah, the, exactly. The like if we're missing, like there, that's some of the news we thought that was um, the big Relevant stories and stories. rivalries and stuff. There's obviously a lot more with, with certain fighters. People have their favorites that they look into. But we just thought they were the big ones that uh, bounced off to us. So um, something else that uh, stats and figures here for the year. Just looking back at 2016. So this is your stats and your numbers, okay? So in the year of 2016, there was 20 so far. So 22 
title bouts with Cruz um, and Garbrandt and Nunez, uh, Nunez and Rousey are going to be 21 and 22. So in the year, is going to be 22 titles, okay? So nine times the champion has defended their belt. Uh, one of them times was as a draw. That was obviously Woodley and Thompson. And eight challengers um, beat the champion during that time. Eight challengers. So yeah. technically, with there was three interim titles. Oh, okay. John Jones, St. Peru, Aldo Edgar, and Holloway Pettis. Um, so yeah, you had you had eight champions lost a belt, and you had nine times they defended it once by a draw. So that's you know the belts change hands yeah. quite regularly in the year as well, especially um, the women's bantamweight division, obviously. Who's being passed around like parts of the parcel yeah, for a yeah. bit? So it'll be interesting to see with Nunes. Will will that trend continue? Um, Quite possibly. Yeah, we'll probably yeah. look at that a little bit. If you had to guess, uh, Dan, because uh, Rob's cast is on these, how many I U- watched, I didn't look at them. How many UFC debuts was there in 2016? How many fighters made their debut? Give them give a bit of a range. That's tough. 60? Like, like between something and something. Between, well, I'll give you a couple of figures. No, just guess. <laughs> Fuck 45. Oh, wow. 60? <laughs> way off. <laughs> way, like, way off, yeah. What do you think? 60? No. no. It's 111 UFC oh. debuts in 2016. Really? That's crazy. That's serious amount of yeah. debuts. But then again, it? if you look at it, you, the amount of events that yeah. got on. And, yeah. and is, that, is that counting the Ultimate Fighter as well or not? Uh, no, that would be UF the actual official because the Ultimate Fighter is technically Exhibitions. exhibition fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so no, that's Damn, that's that that's, many fights. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Crazy. And I was thinking, ah, this isn't up to date. And I was like, Paul Craig made his debut last week. I'll have a look. Yeah, but then, oh, but then you're today. saying that exactly like Paul Craig, God Beer. You've just um, what's the other Welsh guy? Marsden. Who's just uh, signed um, up? Oh, uh, who's just Mike, signed Mike up? Tyson. Phillips, yeah. John Phillips. Yeah. yeah. Well, he no, hasn't debuted did. yet. Mark the Acasey as well was another one. Yeah, he's so, just you know, trying within, to think of UK. That, one. This Charlie space. Ward is another one. I can't go through all 100 and yeah, 111. So yeah, now that you mention it, just, you've just we named, have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just named six, six, seven guys. Yeah, just within from the UK yeah. circuit. Yeah, who made a debut? That's crazy. Yeah, big time. Uh, how many knockouts? How many knockouts were in the year? Knockouts. Yeah. 110. Now it doesn't have to be a, a knockout, knockout. It can be a TKO. Oh, so well, not that's two out. different things, isn't it? Well, that's why I fucking uh, rephrase the question, isn't it? Have a word, Rob. One job. Have a word. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, you slag. Right. Tell me. So T- TKOs or both? Both. TKOs knockouts, TKOs. 280. Ah, oh, you're way over. I wish it was 200. What a fight. What a fight in here you thought we had. <laughs> I'm going to say many fights a year. Is this the UFC, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many fights a year. So about it, uh, two cards a month. About 10 fights in a card on average. Ish. He's doing his Carlo Vardaman yeah. here. Look, we'll go with 151 knockout finishes. Um, I must bear in mind that these uh, stats are from UFC metrics and, and counts, and we've gone off and we've checked them on the likes of Wikipedia and, and different pages. Because Wikipedia is always right. Wikipedia is always <laughs> right, so we just said we better check on UFC. Submissions. How many submission wins have been in the year? Oh, man. So, what was the knockouts? 151. 120. This is a very famous number in bingo. In bingo? Yeah. One. In bingo? Yeah. It'd be another way of bingo 66. calls as in quackity quack 22. 66 so, number. I never you know. played bingo. Yeah. If you had a few drinks and uh, the bar was getting less and you were a single man and there was a girl standing in the corner who like going to the chipper, you might go... That's goes right over my head. Two fat ladies, 88. Two fat ladies, 88. Um, First round finishes, um, including a non no contest. First round finishes. Yeah, it's like a quiz that you didn't weren't prepared for. How much? Seventy one. Did you look that up? No, because you're nowhere near the number. (laughs) <laughs> Look at his little face, yeah. Alex. <laughs> oh. Thought you fucking nailed yeah. it. Yeah, go on, Rob. Um, no, it's not seventy-one. A <laughs> hundred, hundred and six. Ah, oh, close. That was a good show. Yeah. This is a very tough one now. Draws. How many draws were there in the year? Six. Five. Again, the UFC. Ooh, Jesus, seven. He's we're nearly there oh, between yeah. us. So the fastest KO of the year went to. Try and think about a really six fast seconds. knockout. Ooh, wasn't no. it? No, 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 no. It wasn't. Did UFC now? Is it UFC? Yeah, yeah, it's all UFC. Fastest knockout. It was in the light heavyweight division. Light heavyweight. I was thinking, oh. 
don't know. Yes. Yeah, Hits like a truck. Oh, Rumble. Anthony Rumble Johnson. Against oh, Latifi. Against, no, no, against uh, no. Gus. No. That was quick. No, no. I thought that was quick, wasn't it? Glover takes here. Oh, shit. In a many seconds. Connor's favourite number? 13. 13 seconds. <laughs> uh, the fastest choke goes to... That's a choke. Chaz Skelly versus oh, Maximino yeah, yeah, Blanca yeah, yeah. in a many seconds. Boy, Anaconda choke. Anaconda. Oh, 14 seconds. My Anaconda. <laughs> <laughs> 19 seconds. Um, so these are just a bit, I'll throw these I just won't get them uh, most knockouts and TKOs on the one card was 8 and that was at UFC 199 uh, then obviously the reverse of that submissions most subs was 6 and that was on the UFC fight note in Desanias versus Alvarez uh, most TKOs by a fighter in a year was 3 and it was 3 fighters who had 3 knockouts or TKOs can you name them 3 fighters Donald Cerrone no no so three fighters have had three KOs or TKOs. So they've had three in total, and there's three fighters. Three in total, three fighters. Uh, One is a champion. One is about to fight Robbie for a belt. Lawler. No, he's no. not a champion anymore. Is he not? Woodley? No. We're shit at this, Dan. Yeah, I know. We're fucking yeah. shit at dying. <laughs> nice. I'll give you one. Steve Amy Ojic, heavyweight oh, champion. He's had yeah. three TKOs or KOs. The other clue is if you ask me to predict this fight, I'll just say his name. Ah, oh, Conde? No. Remember I said I don't need to fight Conde this breakdown. Even, can, Remember I said I don't need to oh, fight this Gagar breakdown. Masassi. Gagar Masassi. And the other one is fighting very soon. You're looking at the answers, Rob. Co- uh, Cody. Cody Garbrandt, yep. <laughs> yep, there you go. Uh, so, yeah, there, there's your stats. There's some interesting stats in that, isn't there? Yeah, like, for yeah. me, looking at it, I, I was shocked with um, the amount of debuts. That's one that really stood out to me yeah. was the debuts. Like, 111 debutants is, is absolutely crazy number. Yeah. Um, but, again, it's very hard to pick them, like, knockouts and stuff out of the air. It's yeah. it's insanely difficult, you know? I, I would I would like to have known, out of them debuts, how many from the beginning of the year where they made their debuts to now are still active fighters or have yeah, a big yeah. cut off back it's in the probably fights. a lot of one-and-dones are... Yeah, I'd, I'd say in fairness, I would say that's uh, if I, I, I could check that if I were. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. 